Let's see. <coughs> so the, the, way, the way this experiment works then is, I say we, we send up the test masses in the experiment. Well, what is it? It's a vacuum chamber with <coughs> shelves sitting in, sitting in the chamber with test masses sitting on the shelves. There, the, the chamber is sent upwards by the bouncer. Uh, and once it leaves the bouncing apparatus, the motor slows it down slightly. It, it is then <coughs> going upwards and slowing down under gravity. The motor slows it a bit extra so as to drag it behind the test masses a wee bit. The test masses float off their stage. Then they, they continue freely falling, slowing down, turning around, and coming back down. And, um, and the, uh, the, the, cart, the, the, the cart and the vacuum chamber slow down a little bit when they, when they first strike the bouncer very gently. The test masses settle back down, and then they go into the, the full bounce cycle. Um, the best way to do these experiments is with the test masses in exactly the same place, so they experience exactly the same gravity gradients. We can't do that. We can't put our test masses in the same place because of the way we measure the distance between them. So we make the test masses appear to be in the same place by swapping them, exchanging them back and forth, left and right, top and bottom, uh, with very accurate measurements of the position of the test masses. Uh, and so uh, we make them appear to be constant. Next. Here's a diagram of the apparatus. Um, I've, I've already mentioned a number of the pieces, but this shows the, the optical diagram. Uh, here's the cart we're running on. This is the existing rail uh, shown in schematic form. There's a linear motor built into the system as well. So there's, there's guideway and motor in, in this system. And then this is a schematic diagram of the vacuum chamber in which uh, a uh, modulated modulated laser beam enters the chamber, um, is directed to a beam splitter which directs some of the energy around this ring formed between two corner cubes. Here are two test masses made of containing some different material in a, a sort of in a payload chamber or as, as part of the, the payload of the test mass and having each a corner cube uh, and the corner cubes face each other. The uh, light then, the corner cubes are positioned so that the, uh, the light will recycle uh, around, and this is a low finesse optical cavity, about half a dozen round trips. And uh, finishing with the cavity, the beam escapes to be caught by a detector, allowing us to, to measure the distance. Um, Right, so we're going to send a beam in. What is that? Uh -oh. <laughs> you can uh, Thank you. Um, there are three major technologies that go into this experiment. There's the laser gauge that measures the distance between the test masses. From the distance, we estimate the acceleration. There's there's the motion system, which is, I would say, one of the major technologies. It is, I would say, the major headache. And uh, we are solving that problem, as I, as I will explain. I'll spend a significant amount of time on the motion system. And uh, then there is a capacitance gauge system, which uh, solves a problem that I haven't yet raised, but it's a big problem. Um, and the, the experiment is in, is in three stages. We're working to get Gen 1 operating, which shows that we can make the basic measurement. Uh, and Gen 3 will be a full-scale uh, test with all systematic errors uh, uh, studied and uh, accounted for. And that's where we will, we, we will further the state of the art. Uh, this is the laser gauge. This is the way we measure the distance between the test masses. Um, the, we, we begin, we want to measure the distance between this corner cube and this one. And so we have this cavity arrangement in which some light is coupled in, some of it travels around and goes on. And when, when this wavelength is on resonance with the cavity, that is to say there's an even number of, of waves in this round trip, uh, light, light, enters the, light couples into the cavity, uh, is dissipated in the mirrors, and is absorbed. So used in this way, there is a dip in the received intensity on resonance, uh, as you would expect to see in a reflection cavity. Um, but this is actually a, a transmitting sort of a, uh, of a of a configuration with this beam splitter. 
So uh, once you have a dip on resonance, you can do the usual thing. You apply modulation. Uh, we, we apply, uh, here I'm showing you a phase modulator. You can also apply the modulation directly to the, uh, to the uh, laser injection current. Um, and create a frequency or phase modulated beam here uh, that rocks us back and forth across the minimum of the uh, cavity resonance. And uh, detecting here in phase with this, uh, with this modulating frequency, which is typically a, a low radio frequency, um, uh, detecting in phase here, we then uh, have an error signal which is proportional to the, uh, which for, is, 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 gives the magnitude and sign of the offset of the tuning of the laser from the cavity. And we can split the cavity fringe to about a part ten of the fifth. We've gotten, we've gotten two picometer performance in one minute with this laser gauge. We will need to push it to one picometer in one second for uh, this experiment. And uh, I don't anticipate that that will be ter terribly difficult. The shot noise is, is orders of magnitude lower than that. Um, it's just stripping off technical noise sources. Uh, once you have locked the laser to the cavity, uh, you need to know its optical frequency. And um, so what you do is you take a similar laser, lock it to a reference cavity, and then take the optical heterodyne. The, the optical heterodyne is then a radio frequency, uh, which is easily counted. Um, and uh, the reason we use this tunable laser approach is because tunable lasers uh, of narrow line with extremely rapid tunability and um, uh, low cost are, are readily available now thanks to the telecommunications industry. Components in fiber, everything's very easy to do. Um, the reason you need rapid tunability is because even with a, a, um, a telecom diode laser here, the range over which you can tune the laser is relatively limited. So you can't move these two corner cubes very far apart, a handful of waves, uh, before you run out of room in your laser tuning and you can't follow anymore. So what the controller then does is it finds that you're running out of uh, frequency tuning uh, room and it jumps several fringes uh, to follow the next fringe. We've made this work with our old sort of one line system which is based on, the, on a helium neon laser. Um, and, and shifting the frequency with an acoustic optic modulator and heroically achieving uh, about one and a half fringes of, of uh, shift range. Um, and uh, we've, we've been able to follow fringes at, at 20 microsecond uh, repetition rate, which is a, a decent velocity, it's millimeters per second. Um, and and th that's what we need for this work. And we've used that to detect uh, vibration of the test masses, which caused transitory liftoff of two types. One, the test mass would hop up and down, would, would, free, would, would execute a parabola of a few microns amplitude in a millisecond duration. And uh, other times, other lateral vibration would cause just one test mass foot of the three to lift off. That was a slower parabola. It was maybe a micron amplitude in a few, millisecond, a few milliseconds duration. And looking at the accelerations, I was able to reconstruct that those were the two kinds of behavior. And that all, that, that all was coming through this, this old laser with the one fringe range. And um, this one we expect will do a lot better. We also will improve this experiment while, while we want those laser gauges to be able to follow vibration for other space applications in, in astronomical instruments. Um, this laser we hope will not need to tr follow nearly so much vibration. And of course the best cavity in the world uh, the, 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 the most steady, stable, slowly varying cavity in the world would be made by two freely falling test masses because nothing's touching it.